I actually had a, um, a happen chance. Back in March, I ran into a neighbor, an 89-year-old woman, and asked her if I had seen cats in her yard. And she rolled her eyes and informed me that she was feeding 13 feral cats. That last year, she had had three. They had brought 10 kittens and that she was beside herself because no one could help her. So I came to the shelter and asked for traps and we basically formed a partnership with me trapping the cats and the shelter taking any kittens that came from those trappings to be put in the shelter for adoption. And that was in March. Last week, I just trapped my 200th adult cat, in, so in eight months, and I have put over 150 kittens in the shelter. What happens is a house cat gets tossed out, abandoned, lost, and its second and third generation of kittens becomes more and more feral, wild, until they really are no longer at all approachable and they act truly like wild animals. I am a member of the board. I joined the board of directors about three months ago, and I'm also a volunteer, a volunteer who walks the dogs, helps clean out cages for the cats, and so forth, whatever's needed. We really very rarely euthanize animals here. The only time we uh, euthanize an animal, if it's really sick and there's no potential of it getting better, and it could cause um, an outbreak in the, in the shelter, or if there's a behavior that, such as like resource guarding, where the dog is absolutely not adoptable to a family, it wouldn't be safe and the dog cannot be rehabilitated. Um, we don't have the resources to keep dogs here forever, you know, and they shouldn't live here forever. But um, I wish that people volunteered more at shelters. Um, the hands-on companionship and getting animals ready to be adopted into homes is essential. So the more people who could spend time with the animals, the more likely they would be adopted because they wouldn't be so afraid. You know, they come into the shelter setting and the noise is awful. And the barking alone, you know, is just nerve-wracking for a lot of the new animals coming in. So. Um, we are trying to build a new facility, and I would really hope that the community would support their shelters. My name is Susan Beecher, and I'm the shelter director here at the Humane Society of Port Jervis and Deer Park. We need money right now just to maintain the facilities that we have. It costs us about $30,000 a month to run this shelter, and um, we lose money just about every month. Um, we, have a, we have a great community here that we live in and we are constantly amazed by the donations of both money and materials and food and time and um, services. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a constant struggle as it is for any animal shelter to, to keep operating. Um, several cats and dogs who've been here a while. Um, one of them was Mo, who actually got adopted today, which was the most awesome news. Um, so Mo was here a long time. We have Faith, who is a, a brindle mix, and she's gorgeous. She's about six years old, and she's been here quite some time. Her adoption actually fell through, um, so we were really sad about that because she's just she just needs to go to a home so badly. She's got so much to give. Our older dogs are, are very accepted by the community that we serve, and um, we have found homes for dogs, um, you know, anywhere from puppies up to um, 12, 13 years old. Uh, the, the older dogs really get to me. They, uh, you know, they've, some of them have lived difficult lives, and uh, we had a, an older Cairn Terrier um, named Lucy. 
I fostered her for a while after she had her surgery and uh, she was here for a while. She was very picky with her people <laughs> and uh, there were certain people she, she either really liked people or she really didn't like people. And a woman came in here one day after she had been here quite, quite a while and um, they clicked immediately. And uh, this, this woman had adopted senior animals before and had two older dogs at home and Lucy fit in just beautifully. And I just got an update from her um, not too long ago by, by email and uh, she's doing really well. So that was, that was one dog that, uh, you know, really, really touched my heart. People think that we are funded by the government or by the city or town in which um, the shelter resides, but that's a myth. We are completely funded by donations from the public. We get most of our money from um, donations from fundraisers. We do apply for grants. Um, we work with other uh, advocacy groups to help um, fund things like spaying and neutering. We work with Tara, which is a local um, spay and neutering clinic which helps us and they give us a discounted rate as a shelter. Uh, we work with veterinarians who also assist in giving us discounted rates but we are completely funded by the public. We are not a private organization so we don't have any means from um, you know the towns or the governments. We do contract with towns to take in animals that they find from their animal control officers and there is a set fee for that but it's so low in compared to the lifetime of the care of the animal that we give. Most dogs or cats are here, you know, at least six months um, and longer. We actually had um, a case where um, the animal control brought in farm animals. <laughs> we rescued over 30 rabbits here. We have three goats, a pig. Um, so that was, that was unique because we weren't really set up for farm animals, so we're utilizing our barn in the back and one of the dog run areas for the pig and the goats to run around. And we actually had volunteers step up to help care for the rabbits because there's no way our staff would have been able to take care of 30 rabbits every day and the additional farm animals, you know, in addition to the animals we currently have here. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. But little guys like this are going to go into a loving home. <laughs>